فيا سائلا عن منهج الحق يبتغي سلوك طريق القوم حقا ويسعد تأمل هداك الله ما قد نظمته تأمل من قد كان للحق يقصد الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد وصحبه أجمعين حياكم الله ومرحبا بكم My beloved brothers, I welcome you guys to our dars, our weekly dars on the Metin Al-Usul Al-Thalatha, the three fundamental principles, which is a very important Metin on the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Metin that the Muslim should read, ponder over, memorize, and benefit from. And so far we had roughly three classes. Today we will enter the book, inshallah, after we finish one of the introductions. Before we do that, it's very good to do muraja. It's very good to do revision, to know where everybody's at, and to know if everybody has been taking advantage of the breaks that we have. When we started this book, and you guys can use your notes for this, when we started this book, I told you guys this book is broken, or this text, or this risala, this treatise is broken down into specific categories. And I named a specific number and what those categories are. Can anyone tell me? Anyone know the answer? We said this book over here is divided into five categories. If you guys don't remember this, please write it down. We said the first category that this book is divided in is the four obligations from Surah Al-Asr. We said the second one is the three points regarding Tawheed. The third one is the importance of studying Tawheed. The fourth one is the actual uh, introduction, or not the introduction, the actual point of the book. The three fundamental principles, the three questions that should be asked. And the fifth one is a conclusion. It's a khulasa. Someone repeat it to me. Uh, the four barriers of Surah Asr. Tawheed, importance of Tawheed. Uh, the point of the book and the conclusion. Ahsant. Yeah, I should know this because when a student of knowledge is generally studying a book, a student of knowledge, it's very important for him to know what the book contains that he's studying. How the chapters are broken down. Uh, this is very important. It's very embarrassing for a student of knowledge studying a book. He doesn't know who the author is. He doesn't know uh, what the book is about. He doesn't read the conclusion. He doesn't read the introduction. It's very important a student does that. Barakallahu uh, feekum. Who's the muallif? Who's the author of this book? When was he born? He was born was the correct opinion? Ahsant. And when did he die? Oh. Ahsant. How many years did Allah bless him with? 91. 91? Or is it 92? Yeah. Why do people start off with the books of Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab? What does this book contain uh, for the beginning student knowledge? Afwar, can you please say that again louder? Ahsant. What else? What's the benefits of his uh, book? It's a small risala, small book to uh, to easily attain the knowledge. Mm-hmm. Jameel, what else, guys? Each point he brings up, he brings a delay from the Quran or the Sunnah. Ahsant, Jameel. I gave you guys in the beginning when I told you guys the reason why this book was written or the purpose uh, for this book being written. What was the purpose for it? Uh, he was in a dark time with uh, a lot of shirk. And the ruler aided him to spread his book so that uh, they can. The ruler aided him in the area so that he they can like spread the correct to him. And then they told him to write these small books. Ah, so so that's, I said that's the part I needed right there. So the ruler at that time, Muhammad ibn Sa'ud, he asked Sheikh Muhammad ibn Wahab to write a risala. For the Muslim awam to benefit from and from the Tullab al to benefit from. So the Shaykh wrote this Risala over here. Last week we spoke about Tawheed and Shirk. We said Tawheed breaks down how many categories? Three categories. Taib, what are they? Tawheed al Islam, Sidiq Facts, Tawheed al Rubiya, Tawheed al Rubiya. Taib, and which are Shirk breaks down into? And what is the difference between the two? Uh, one takes you out of the fault of Islam and one 
does not take you all the full swim. The example that I gave with Shirk al Asghar is the one who swears by the Prophet or swears by the Kaaba. This is Shirk al Asghar. But if they believe what they're swearing by is greater than Allah or equal to Allah, then it's Shirk al Akbar. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad wa sallam tasliman Salam kathira. Hanif linguistically means to lean towards something. Islamically, it means the path that is far away from shirk and to be upon ikhlas, to be upon tawheed, to be upon iman. And this is why Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was upon, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanita lillahi hanifa wa lam yaku minal mushrikeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Ibrahim, he was a leader. He was an ummah. And he devoutly obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inclining towards the truth. And he was not from those who associate others with Allah. He was not from those who associate partners with Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was referred to as Hanif because he turned away from shirk. He turned away from associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he chose to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. The Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is a qudwa for us. He's a leader. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commanded the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to follow Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam many places in the Quran as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said ثُمَّ أَوْحَيْنَ إِلَيْكَ أَنِ اتَّبِعْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that we have inspired you O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, follow the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, al-Hanif, Islamic monotheism, to worship none but Allah, and he was not of the mushrikeen. And the ayah that the shaykh used as proof for this over here is the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. This ayah over here, Ahl al-Ilm, and our Shaykh, Shaykh Ubaid al-Jabri, Hafidhullah, he broke this, down, this ayah down in a few categories. He said, number one, this ayah over here, it explains the wisdom behind why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mankind, created mankind and the jinn, and that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship him alone. Number two, it is to believe in the existence of the jinn. And that they are ordered to perform the legislated acts, just like mankind is. The obedient from amongst them will receive a reward, and the disobedient are deserving of a punishment, just like us. Number three, then this is a proof that the message of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has reached the jinn and mankind. And this has also been proven clearly in the Quran. And in the Sunnah, in the Quran, as we know, there is a surah called Surah Al-Jinn, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
قل أوحي إلي أنه استمع نفر من الجن فقالوا إنا سمعنا قرآنا عجبا يهدي إلى الرشد فآمنا به ولن نشرك بربنا أحدا Say O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم It has been revealed to me that a group of jinn listened and said indeed we have heard an amazing Quran It guides to the right course and we have believed in it and we will never associate with our Lord anymore So this over here proves to us that the message of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was to mankind and it was to jinn. The Shaykh, Rahimahullah, Shaykh Muhammad uh, ibn Abdul Wahab, he started speaking about worship. And he said, The meaning to worship me means to single me out. Ya'abunun yuwahidun. Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu anhuma, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him and his father, he said, Every instance in worship is used in the Quran, it means Tawheed. So if you see Ya'budun in the Quran, it means Tawheed. So worship is very important. We see the purpose that we were created for, the purpose that the Muslim, the purpose that the mankind, the purpose that the non-Muslim, the purpose that we were created for is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're brought in this world to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worship Him with knowledge, worship Him with hikmah, and to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So what is worship? What is the definition of worship? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah as Ahl al-Ilm always quote when they say the definition of worship. He said, Ibadah, worship is ismun, jami'u, likulli ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu min al-aqwali wal-a'mali al-dhahirati wal-batina. Worship al-ibadah is a comprehensive term covering everything that Allah loves and is pleased with, whether saying or actions outward and inward. Shaykh Abdul Rahman ibn Yahya al may Allah have mercy on him, was a scholar who was close to our time, he wasn't far away. Uh, when he defined worship, he said, He said the definition of worship is a self-chosen humility, seeking from it an unseen benefit. And that unseen benefit is Jannah, my brothers. The Shaykh, Rahimahullah, Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, he continued and he said, the greatest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with is Tawheed. And that is to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And the greatest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned against is shirk. And that is supplicating to others alongside Allah. My brothers, Tawheed is very important. And as we took last week, we took the definition of Tawheed. We took that Tawheed divides into three. Divides into three categories. What are the three categories of Tawheed, brothers? Rububiyah, Rububiyah, Ahsant, what does Rububiyah mean? Uh, the Lordship. The Lordship of Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And give me an example of the Lordship of Allah. Or Tawheed or Rububiyah. He's the creator. He's the creator. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. Tawheed. A Tawheed al Uluhiyah. We worship Allah with our salahs. And any of our worship that we do just worship Allah. التوحيد الأسماء والصفات. His names and attributes. حسنت. طيب. And we said this is important because with توحيد is how you know Allah سبحانه وتعالى. It is mandatory for the Muslim to know who Allah سبحانه وتعالى is and to hold on to that توحيد. And we said something and we said something that the Muslim needs to refrain away from, and it is the greatest crime. That mankind could commit that is shirk and last week's class we spoke about shirk we said shirk has two categories we said shirk al-akbar and we said shirk al-asghar the major shirk and the minor shirk and there's plenty of reasons why shirk is the biggest crime a believer could commit number one is how dare you associate a partner with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the rights for us to worship him how dare you do that over there? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created you, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that nurtured you, how dare you associate a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Number two is shirk is from the greatest of the kabair, from the greatest of the sins. Number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first warning he gave in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah was shirk. Was, uh, was prohibiting shirk. Number four, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said an authentic hadith 
من مات وهو يدعو من دون الله ندا دخل النار. The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the authentic hadith, whoever dies while still invoking anything other than Allah as a rival to Allah will enter the fire in Sahih al-Bukhari. <laughs> So, if it is said to you, what are the three fundamental principles that mankind is obligated to know? Then say that the servant knows his Lord, his religion, and his Prophet Muhammad. May the peace and blessings of Allah be on you. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers, this is very important because this over here is aslan what this book is about. Those three questions over there. And it was narrated from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a sahih hadith. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he narrated the ayah, the ayah from the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah will keep firm those who had faith in the firm word, in the worldly life, and in the hereafter. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he continued while he was explaining this, and he said, فِي الْقَبْرِ إِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ مَنْ رَبُّكَ وَمَا دِينُكَ وَمَنْ نَبِيُّكَ He said, and this is in the grave when it is said to him, Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is your Prophet? This right now may be easy on our tongues to say. But for the one who dies, and he's not upon the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he does not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the rights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves. How can he say this? How? Some people when they will get buried and the two angels come to them and ask them these three questions over here. They will say, I don't know. سمعت كذا. I heard this. I heard that. So we are not promised that we will be from the ones who say this. That is why we have to strive. We have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that the grave will be easy for us. These three questions are very important, brothers. And it's something that we should always ponder over. And we should always strive for. The first fundamental principle Say if it is said to you Who is your Lord? Then say My Lord is Allah The one who nurtured me And nurtured all of creation through his favors And he is the one whom I worship There being to me no false deity worthy Who I worship that is equal to him The proof for this is Allah's statement Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen all praise be to Allah, the Lord of Al Alameen, all of creation. The word Alim refers to everything apart from Allah, and I am part of that creation. Amen. Barakallahu feek. The Mu'allif, Rahimahullah, Shaykh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, may Allah have mercy on him, he clarified uh, this principle over here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord, the one deserving of worship, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the perfect. Then he also mentioned a proof. Of this over here from Surah Al Fatiha, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, All praise is for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Tayyib, this ayah in Surah Al Fatiha, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. This little ayah over here is very deep and it has aqsam of Tawheed in it. It has the three categories of Tawheed in it. So if we break it down, uh, number one, Hamd, Alhamd, all praise. This over here, my brothers. Praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this over here affirms Tawheed al-Uluhiyya. It affirms the Tawheed of worship. Allah, Lillah, for Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from his names. So this over here, it affirms Tawheed al-Asma wa sifat. Allah is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from his names. So it affirms Tawheed al-Asma wa sifat. Rabb. The Lord, this over here affirms Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
this ayah over here alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen the beginning of it all praise the ayah which means all praise is for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the lord of the worlds so the first part all praise praise is from worship it's a form of worship so this affirms tawheed al-uluhiyya tawheed al-ibadah the tawheed of worship allah is one of his names so it affirms tawheed al-asma wa sifat the lord affirms tawheed al-rububiyya the lordship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can someone repeat this to me barakallahu feek no no hamd is a praise so it's uh basically defining the worship uh so that's tawheed al-uluhiyya Allah yeah, is one of his names, and that's uh, as Imam Sifat, and Rabb uh, is Lord, uh, Lordship, that's yeah, Rabbi Bia. Yeah. Ahsan, was he correct about this? No. Ahsan, ah. perfect. Barakallahu feekum. Ahsan, Allah alaykum. Wa alaykum. Qala al-Mu'allifu rahimahullah, fa idha qila lak, bima arafta rabbak, fa qul, bi ayatihi wa makhluqatih, wa min ayatih, الليل والنهار والشمس والقمر ومن مخلوقاته السماوات السبع ومن فيهم والأرضون السبع ومن فيهم وما بينهما قليل So if it is said to you how did you come to know of your Lord then say by way of his signs and his creations and among his signs are the night and the day and the sun and the moon and among his creations are the seven levels of heaven and the seven levels of earth, as well as whoever and whatever lies in them and between them. The proof for this is Allah's statement. And from among his signs are the night and the day, and the sun and the moon. Do not prostrate yourself to the sun or to the moon, but rather prostrate yourselves to Allah who created them, if it is he whom you truly worship. Brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's known by his signs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's a proof for everything. In all things, there is a sign of Allah. What do I mean by this? In all things, there is a sign that proves the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not possible to look into yourself and then reject the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Due to the fact that if you reject the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you're rejecting your existence in this life. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you and placed you in this world to worship him. My beloved brothers, the most delightful thing in this dunya, in this world, or the most delightful experience in this world is wanting to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then longing to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the most delightful experience in the hereafter is seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Some faces that day shall be shining. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and he said, إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا نَاظِرَةً Looking at their Lord. And this is from the greatest thing that a believer could get is by seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I started this off by telling you guys the most delightful experience in the dunya is wanting to know, by, wanting to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then longing to meet Him. And I told you the most delightful experience in the hereafter is seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he combined both of this in a hadith. An authentic hadith, hadith Ammar. I think it was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَسْأَلُكَ لَدَّةَ النَّظْرِ إِلَىٰ وَجْهِكَ وَالشَّوْقَ إِلَىٰ لِقَائِقَ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I ask you for the pleasure of seeing your face and the longing of meeting you. So this over here is something that the believer should always strive for, wanting to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, longing to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wanting to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. This is from the biggest blessings that a believer could get. And it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, how the believers will see him on that day. And this hadith over here, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he combined asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said, As'aluka laddata nadri ila wajhik. I ask you for the pleasure of seeing your face. Washawqa ila liqa'iq. And the longing of meeting you. أحسن الله إليكم. قال المؤلف رحمه الله والدليل قوله تعالى ومن آياته الليل والنهار والشمس والقمر لا تسجدوا للشمس ولا للقمر واسجدوا لله الذي خلقهن إن كنتم إياه تعبدون. وقوله تعالى إن ربكم الله الذي 
خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش يغشي الليل النهار يطلبه حثيثا والشمس والقمر والنجوم مسخرات بأمره ألا له الخلق والأمر تبارك الله رب العالمين And from his statement Verily your Lord is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days and then rose over the throne He brings the night as a cover over the day which, is fo- which it follows rapidly and he made the sun, the moon, and the stars subjected to his command. Surely to him belongs the creation and the command. Blessed is Allah, Lord of the worlds. The word Rabb means one who is worshipped. Uh, this is the next one. Yeah. As we see over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about his signs. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about what he created. And from the biggest proof of the existence of Allah is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, his creation. And the author over here, Shaykh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah, he differentiates between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sign and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. This is because the signs such as the night and the day changing, alternating, are a strong proof, a very, very strong proof of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, by looking at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created from the moon, from the sun, from the skies, this is a proof of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if one really ponders and looks at it, you will know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And you will know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. And you will not get the doubts that these mulhideen or these atheists come through at you when they try to question the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. والعياذ بالله والرب هو المعبود والدليل قوله تعالى يا أيها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون الذي جعل لكم الأرض فراشا والسماء بناء وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا وأنتم تعلمون قال ابن كثير رحمه الله تعالى الخالق لهذه الأشياء والمستحق للعبادة <تصفيق> The word Rabb Lord means one who is worshipped The proof of this is Allah saying O mankind, worship your Lord who created you and those before you so that you may be beautiful to him He is the one who made the earth a resting place for you and the sky is a canopy He sent down water from the sky and brought forth therewith fruits as a provision for you so do not set up rivals with Allah and worship knowingly. Ibn Kathir, may Allah have mercy on him, said, The creator of these things is the one who truly deserves to be worshipped. Ahsan, barakallahu fi. Tayyib. So, the Mu'allif, rahimahullah, Shaykh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, he said, the, the Lord, Rabb, is the one who should be worshipped. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who should be worshipped. And the word Rabb, Rabb over here, this word, is only used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This word is only used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it has a alif and lam in it. And it's by itself, it's only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyib, how about if this word over here has another word with it or goes alongside it? For example, the Arabs, they will say Rabbul Bayt. For example, the meaning the owner of the house or the landlord. So this word over here has another um, word connecting to it. And this word over here does not have the and it does not have the alif and lam, then it is okay to use it for something else like a landlord. But a rub with alif and lam is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very important that we understand that. And the Shaykh over here, uh, Rahimallah, uh, he showed us over here the proof that the first command in the Quran is Tawheed. Ya Yuhannas, Ubudu Rabbakum. O mankind, uh, worship your Lord. And he also showed us the first nahi in the Quran, the prohibition is shirk. فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ And do not ascribe partners or rivals to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah you know. So this is a proof over here that the most dangerous thing that one could do is commit shirk. Is, is commit shirk. And the most honorable thing for somebody is tawheed. <laughs> وأنواع العبادة التي أمر الله بها مثل الإسلام والإيمان 
والإحسان ومنها الدعاء والخوف والرجاء والتوكل والرغبة والرهبة والخشوع والخشية والإنابة والاستعانة والاستعادة والاستغاثة والذبح والنبر وغير ذلك من أنواع العبادة التي أمر الله بها كلها لله تعالى والدليل قوله تعالى وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعو مع الله أحدا The author, may Allah, may Allah have mercy on him, said the types of worship that Allah commanded, such as Islam, Iman, and Ihsan, which includes supplication, fear, hope, reliance, longing, and dreading, submissiveness, awe, repentance, seeking assistance, seeking refuge, asking for help, offering sacrifices, making oaths, and all of the other types of worship that Allah commanded. All of these belong to Allah alone. The proof for this is Allah's saying, and the masajid belong to Allah. So do not call unto anyone along with Allah. Ahsan, to continue. فَمَنْ صَرَفَ مِنْهَا شَيْئًا لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ مُشْرِكْ كَافِرْ وَالْدَلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَمَنْ يَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَاهَا أَخَرَ لَا بُرْهَانَ لَهُ بِهِ فَإِنَّمَا حِسَابُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الْكَافِرُونَ وفي الحديث الدعاء مخ العبادة والدليل قوله تعالى وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخلين So whoever does any part, any part of these acts of worship to Allah other than Allah then he is a polytheist, disbeliever The proof for this is Allah saying And whoever calls unto another God besides Allah of which he has no proof for His reckoning is only with his Lord. Surely the disbelievers would not be successful. It is stated in the hadith, the supplication is the core of worship. The proof, of the, the, the proof of this supplication is Allah saying, And your Lord says, Supplicate to me, I will respond to you. Verily those who are, proud, those who are too proud to worship me will enter the hellfire in disgrace. SubhanAllah. Tayyib, over here, the Shaykh Rahimullah talks about different types of worship. And there's a lot of types of worship. There's some over here that are not mentioned. For example, the salah, for example, zakah, for example, siyam, fasting. And this is because shirk often occurs with the types of the worship that the sheikh mentioned. The types of the worship that the sheikh mentioned, usually shirk occurs with them when it comes to supplication, when it comes to fear, when it comes to hope, when it comes to tawakkal, when it comes to Raghba, usually shirk is associated to those types of worship. The Shaykh, rahimahullah, he also quoted, a, he also said a hadith. This hadith is weak. It's a weak hadith. However, there is a stronger hadith uh, that is, Dua huwa al-ibadah. Wa inna dua huwa al-ibadah. Dua is worship. The Prophet uh, said that hadith, and that is a stronger hadith, so you guys could write that down. And a lot of people may wonder and say, Tayyib, how is supplication? How is dua a form of worship? But all, the Shaykh said, uh, he quoted an ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah said this. And this is a proof of how dua, supplication is worship. First, I told you guys the hadith of the Prophet sallam who said, dua huwa al-ibadah. Dua is worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَةِ سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Your Lord has said, supplicate to me. I will respond to you. Those who arrogantly reject my worship will enter the fire with those who enter it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he connected between a dua supplicate, and al-ibadah, worship. Therefore, making dua to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shirk. And a dua supplication, it breaks down into two categories. A dua al-mas'ala, wa dua al-ibadah. Dua al-mas'ala is... A supplication for a need so this is for example uh, if one uh, directs their supplication uh, for example saying oh Allah cure me oh Allah ease my affair and the best way for dua al-mas'ala this dua over here is to use the names and attributes of Allah to call Allah upon his names and attributes as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said walillahi al-asma'u al-husna and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the most beautiful names So, for example, the believer could say, Ya Ghafoor. And this over here, uh, this dua over here, dua al-mas'ala, 
it's uh it, it can break down into two categories it can break down to a major shirk and it can keep break down to something that is permissible but has four conditions so it breaking down to major shirk is if somebody um, asks someone else that which only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to grant so asking anybody else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to grant so I said asking anybody else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in what only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can grant then this is major shirk and then the second point of it of dua al-mas'ala is that which is permissible and that is asking a human being something they're capable of granting uh, something they're capable of granting then this is permissible but it has four conditions in it the human has to be alive the one being asked is present or able to be reached so that means he's not dead and that he's with you you cannot say i'm gonna ask a human being for a favor but he lives you know in another continent and i'm just gonna sit in my house and ask him Without communicating to him, like some of the Sufis, what they say. طيب, the third condition is the one being asked is capable and able of responding and doing it. And the fourth one is that you have to believe that the one who is being asked is only a means and he cannot bring benefit or repel harm himself independent of Allah. So, real quickly, I said dua breaks down into two dua al mas'ala and dua al ibadah. Dua al mas'ala is a supplication for a need. Dua al-ibadah is a supplication of worship. Dua al-mas'ala will break down to two. One that is major shirk and one that is permissible. The one that is major shirk is that which only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to grant. So asking anybody else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what only Allah is able to grant and this is shirk al-akbar, major shirk. We said the permissible one is that which humans are capable of granting and it is permissible with four conditions. The first condition is the one being asked has to be alive. The second condition is the one being asked is present or able to be reached. The third condition is the one being asked is capable and able to respond. The fourth condition is that you must believe that the one who is being asked is only a means and he cannot bring benefit or repel harm himself independent of Allah. Do you guys understand that? No. Someone repeat to me. Um... I'm gonna do for dua al-mas'ala. Alright, you're gonna do you're gonna do that, and then I'm gonna jump to dua al-ibadah. First, I want you guys to understand dua al-mas'ala. Dua al-mas'ala, dua for a need. Yeah. Dua for example, we gave to Allah through me. It could be major shirk if someone, if someone asks someone else something only Allah is able to grant. This is major shirk. Yeah. Because permissible, using a a few minutes. You can ask him, that's the shirk, major shirk one. Hey, what? And the permissible one is asking a female for something they are capable of doing, and then they, that falls into four categories. They have to be alive, capable, uh, or able to reach, and able to respond. And the last one is you have to know that he is the means, and, and that can, he can be benefit or harm independent of Allah. Ahsan. That's dua ul mas'ala. Supplication for a need. Dua al-ibadah, the dua of worship, it is an indirect supplication such as the salah, praying such as the siyam, fasting such as hajj. And this is directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only Allah. And if someone directs it to other than Allah, then this is shirk al-akbar, the major shirk. So now I want someone to break down both types of supplication, dua for me. First one is dua al-mas'ala, dua al-feed, asking or fulfilling, uh, can become impermissible, uh, asking anyone besides Allah, that only Allah can grant, uh, and that would be a major shirk. Uh, it's only permissible if you ask a human who is able to, and those four conditions, uh, that which uh, if the person is alive, is able to be reached, is capable, uh, but uh, you must also believe that the one you ask can bring. Uh, bring benefits or repel harm and depend on Allah and it can only be used as a means. Jade, what dua al-ibadah? The second one, dua al-ibadah, the dua of worship, then this means, you know, to pray 
praying the salah is a form of dual worship fasting is a form of dual worship hajj is a form of dual worship and directing this to other than allah is shirk al akbar jameel al dabh kadhalik jameel you guys understand it طيب ad dua is very important my brothers and it's very important uh, that the believer takes advantage of supplication the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when he was talking about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said man lam yas'al illah yaghdab alayh he who does not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes angry with him. So it is very important that the believer takes advantage of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever he or she needs. Supplication is a form of worship, is a form of ibadah. And supplication has uh, manners, there's, there's proper ways to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the believer has to know how to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By raising their hands, by facing the qibla, by being sincere in what they're asking for, by believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you this, and by believing and knowing that if you don't get this right away, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant it for you if it is good for you. Because how many times does one supplicate for something, but they don't know if there is khayr in it, or if there is shar in it, in certain supplications. So the Muslim has to always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah next week's class will continue and inshallah we'll finish the first asal bi idnillah ta'ala. Wa hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.